And we move on to another round called Remote Control. I'd like to step forward, all four contestants take part in this, each of them pretending to be a different television program. And um, uh, I'd like a suggestion for a sort of general topic from the audience uh, for the, each program can be about. Worldwide. Wildlife. Yes, wildlife is fine. Uh, jolly good. But so each program is, a, all the programs are about wildlife. But Ron, your program is The Twilight Zone. Uh, Griff, uh, you're in, in at the deep end. Uh, Paul, <laughs> you're introducing points of view. And uh, John, you're in Tutti Frutti. Okay, now I'll just uh, buzz between the, the four of you. Uh, as though I was using my remote control at home, discovering you're all dealing with wildlife. Starting with you, Paul. I've got a letter from a badger somewhere in Cheshire. <laughs> the badger says, why can't we have more wildlife documentaries on television starring me and my family? <laughs> well, I've spoken to the higher-ups of the BBC, and they say that we are planning a series on badgers starring Bobby the Badger, who unfortunately doesn't live in your set. <laughs> John. There's a wombat just crawled out of that Dundee cake, Miss Toner. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. There's no Dundee coat over there at all. It's stoting everything. It certainly isn't stoting. Now, let's put it down over there. I'm telling you, sorry, Danny. That's gone Irish. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Imagine a man who lives in New York City who thinks he's a lion. Everyone treats him as if he's in Nairobi. He's not in New York. He's not in Nairobi. He's just crossed the border into the Twilight Zone. Uh, good. Yes, well, they say that it takes at least five years to train a wildlife reserve um, game warden here in the Kenyan bush and I've got to learn to do it in about 20 minutes <laughs> just looking around me now it seems awfully quiet uh, John. what do you mean Danny still up Brodick eating an anaconda I don't understand it at all it's ridiculous he's been eating an anaconda all day I can't play the drums if you're playing an anaconda all oh, your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> And apparently the spider that bit me was, in fact, <laughs> totally poisonous. <laughs> oh. And I've got a letter here from an ostrich somewhere that says Paul Daniels is crap. <laughs> right. I know, honey. I, I, I know. You, you tell me I've got a mane, I know I've got a tail, but I'm a businessman from New York. You can't tell me I'm not. Griff. And the side of my body, this side had gone completely numb. <laughs> Hello, welcome here to Radio Craig and Dorn. And here we have both Susie Kettles and Danny McGlone who brought their own pet anteaters with them. Oh, there's no chance of it, Miss Toner, being up there at all. I'm telling you, Mr. Clockety, that's what they're doing. They need doing nothing to rest at all. They've got a stone basket and everybody's been eating chipmunks and bush babies and all that for months. Oh, you're talking rubbish, Hen. You're talking out of the back of your head. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Again, uh, yeah. Now, that was a... Uh, I think that was a, that was a stunner, that. Uh, yes, one and a half points to everybody on that one. 